Guess you came to visit again. <laughs> you can't hear me right now, can you? You're sleeping so soundly. But I'm sure some part of your subconscious can understand me and is filling you with that delightful feeling of dread. Do you remember it? The sensation of not being alone in the room, of something being there with you, right when you are at your most vulnerable. The knowledge that is creeping closer and closer with each panicked thought in your pretty little head until you can hear a foreign breath next to your ears. Feel a single claw gently caressing your skin down for, to your toes, all the way back up your neck, and then, finally, a sudden weight on your chest, as if something just sat down on you, helplessly pinning you against the soft bed underneath. Oh, it looks like you woke up. Shh. Don't try to struggle. It's useless. You can't move your body right now. Trying to break the sleep paralysis will only terrify you more. Hmm. On second thought, please... Struggle more. I enjoy the growing fear in your... What's that? You look even more teary-eyed than usual. Not that you would actually remember my previous visits, of course. But am I really that intimidating? Looks like I really managed to step up my game this time. <laughs> Ooh, are you crying, my little human? This actually looks kind of pathetic. What? Is the wimpy little human afraid of the big bad monster in the darkness? D don't cry harder, human. Look, I'm sorry for that. I might have gotten a little into it. Shit. What's it do? Um, would it help if I, I don't know, pat your head or something? Yeah, <sighs> I'm sorry. I totally forgot about what I look like right now. Let me dispel the illusion. See, I'm not that different from you. Well, except for the horns and tail, but try not to focus on them, okay? Oh, thank the flames. It seems that you have calmed down a little. Is it okay if I touch you now? Thank you, little human. There, there. Let me also wipe your tears away. You know, your eyes are way too pretty to be hidden behind a layer of tears like that. Oh no, I'm sorry. I can't really do anything about the paralysis once it starts. It just has to wear off on its own. But I promise that I won't do anything to hurt you in the meantime. How long will that take? I really don't know. It differs from person to person. Five to ten minutes, maybe. Oh, right. I'm sorry for not telling you earlier. I am what you call a sleep paralysis demon, even though that name is... Not quite accurate. 
Why not? Well, it makes it seem like there are many kinds of demons that are completely different from each other. When, in reality, we are all fundamentally the same, and only have different preferences and associations. I, for example, am associated with fear. I need to absorb it from humans in order to feed myself, and to make use of sleep paralysis to do so. But I could also use any other technique, just as any other demon could induce sleep paralysis with a little bit of practice. But I'm rambling again. When we are talking about you, why did you cry like that? I try not to distress my victims too much. But was it something I did? Oh, so you had a nightmare. That certainly explains how scared you were. What? Being scared of a nightmare is nothing to be embarrassed about. Why would you even think that? Because that's what everyone says. Well, they are most definitely wrong about that. Don't tell me they also told you that it makes it weak. <gasps> it absolutely it does not. I... I kind of really want to hug you right now, but you are still paralyzed, and I don't want to do anything you don't want me to, so I'll need some kind of verbal consent. Thank you for trusting me so much. Let me just get in there. I believe this is they call this a uh, big spoon when I'm hugging you from behind. So I can use one hand to play with your hair, and another to hold your hands, like that. Please, tell me if you are uncomfortable. Okay, I'll do it like that again. Do you want to tell me what this nightmare was all about? Oh no, honey, that sounds horrible. I am so sorry you had to go through that. No, of course I'm not making fun of you. As I said before, having nightmares is nothing to be ashamed of. No matter how stupid a nightmare seems in hindsight or to others, all your feelings in that moment are completely valid. Everybody is afraid of something, and everybody is different in that regard. So, just because I personally might not find your nightmare particularly scary, does not mean I am still going to belittle your feelings about it. Do you know what a nightmare basically is? It's your own mind torturing you to the best of its ability. It'll find whatever you are most afraid of and turn it against you. And if it can't find anything, it will just make you afraid of something arbitrary. Trust me when I, a little manifestation of fear, tell you that there is no place more terrifying than your own mind. Yes, that's right. It's not your own fault being afraid of a nightmare. I'm glad you're finally showing reason. You just have to get through a nightmare. Acknowledge your feelings in the moment, but not dwell on them too much. Let the fear pass and look forward to the next day. Hmm. You really needed to hear that, didn't you? Your body and mind are much more relaxed now compared to earlier. Speaking of which, by the way, you just subconsciously snuggled deeper into my embrace. I assume that the sleep paralysis has worn off. <laughs> Do you?
don't worry, I won't stop cuddling you just because you're no longer panicking. Unless you want me to, of course. <laughs> Good, because I don't want to stop just yet. Come here, let me hug you tighter. <laughs> hmm. I am sorry that no one told you before that it is okay to be afraid of nightmares. I mean, do you have them regularly? I see. And are they always that bad? Hmm, I'm sorry to hear that, honey. I wish I could have been there for you sooner. Speaking of which, I have a proposal for you if you're interested. What is it? Well, I was planning on imprinting my sigil on your soul. Don't worry, it really doesn't mean anything. And it can be removed fairly easy. If any of us wants to. All it does is create a certain connection between us. You'll be able to summon me whenever you want, and we can both kind of feel each other. So, if you're having a nightmare again, you can summon me to comfort you like this again. Or, maybe I even notice it beforehand and can come here to wake you up. Oh no, don't worry about me. It really is no bother. You remember what I feed on? That's right, fear. So, if nothing else, I'll at least get a meal out of simply coming to your side. Now, does this sound like something you'd like? Great, then hold on still for a moment while I put my hand on your forehead. And... done. Of course you didn't feel anything. Humans are not capable of using magic, so how would you be able to perceive it? I just shared a bit of mine with you, so you can perform a simple summoning spell. Yes, it's kind of like a pact. It's what we demons are famous for, after all. Maybe infamous is the better word, though. What are the terms of the contract? Well, my part is to answer your summon whenever possible and provide comfort. And your part is to definitely call on me whenever you need me. Simple, right? <laughs> you don't have to try to speak through that yawning. All of this must have taken a lot of you, am I right? First having that nightmare, then being woken by a demon. Now that your adrenaline is fading, it is only natural that all the tiredness comes crashing back down on you at once. It's okay. Just go to sleep. I'll be sure to protect you. But, just know, I probably won't be here when you wake up. So I'll try to stay here as long as I can. But demons can only spend a limited amount of time in this world. So don't be disappointed tomorrow, okay? Good. Then just get comfortable and close your eyes. Good night, sweet dreams, honey. <laughs> Mwah.